All right, we're here at my outdoor worm bin, and the last time we were in here, we had kind of a population explosion. In fact, we gathered up some cocoons, and we actually saw a couple of baby worms being born. Now, one of the things that we did was we fed a big feeding, and I wanted to see if the worms could keep up with it. We also found some black soldier fly larvae in there, and I want to see if those are still around. And first thing I see right away is just lots of worms right on the top. So we're going to go ahead and dig down and see if they ate all the food we gave them. Now we gave them lots of watermelon, some banana peels, some tangerine peels. We actually put in a loofah sponge. We put in some little flowers, lettuce stalks, apple core, peppers, and a piece of tortilla. So I'm expecting to see some of that stuff under here. We also put in some unique bedding. We had some toilet paper rolls and we also had an egg carton. And I want to show you something. Last time we saw little black soldier fly larvae and look how fast they grow. It has been 12 days since we were in here last and right away we are seeing some of them. Now, I think, unless I find a whole bunch more, I think I'm gonna go ahead and leave these in the bin. I will put them to the side, but then we'll add them in later. So as summer rolls around, you might find some black soldier fly larvae in your bins also. So what I'm seeing is some of the banana leaves and stalk that we had put in here earlier. Got another black soldier fly larvae bundle here. I'm just kind of putting them in a little container and we'll see what we're gonna do with them. I may just throw them into my compost pile. It has been 12 days since we were in here last, so I'm really impressed with how well they have eaten all the food in here. And certainly these little black soldier fly larvae are helping them out. I think because we're so early in summer and I'm seeing a bunch of them, I'm gonna go ahead and take those out. I think I made a decision there. But check this out. Now when we harvest it, I like to harvest right before I feed every time. I just take about three pounds of castings out. We counted out 522 worms. So I know the population is just continuing to boom and I am definitely seeing it within this bin. I think this bin has somewhere between four and 5,000 worms in it. So right here in the center, the moisture is outstanding. They're getting to all the kind of big bedding that I put in there. They've eaten all the food, so we are gonna give them a pretty big feeding. Now what I brought out here is mostly fast food, so I may have to run inside and get some slow food, but things are looking great. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and mix everything up, and if I run into something cool like this, this is our pumpkin stem that has been in here for absolutely months. And I'm gonna kind of dig in real quick just to see what I can do here. I'm able to break some stuff off. Looks like we've got a worm right there. So it is a little bit soft in there, so that's good. A Little bit soft here, and I don't know if you can see the glistening, but there is some moisture that's being retained. So they're just gonna keep working. It may take up to a year to do this. Oh my gosh, on the sides, on the sides, tons of worms. Look at that, that is just incredible. Tons of worms in here. The other thing is there are so many castings in here. We put in a lot of bedding, yet they have just turned this to vermicompost so quickly. That's the one thing about this bin. It is coming up on three years old, and it just has so many great microbes in it. So when I put stuff in here, we've got the worms attacking it, but three years worth of, you know, a microbiology ecosystem in here is just taking any kind of food and immediately just attacking it, making it easier for the worms to turn it into vermicompost. So one of the things I have noticed is that my piles of food aren't heating up very much. So that is good. And I attribute that to how many worms I have instantly attacking it as it goes in. And here is just another mango seed with lots of baby worms embedded in it. Really cool right there. See a couple right there and then a bunch right there. A little piece of plastic embedded in there. Take that out. Okay, so we put a loofah in here last time and check it out. There are tons of worms all in it. Now the loofah itself, there's not a black soldier fly larvae. The loofah itself was over a year old. We had used it in our kitchen, so it got used very well. And one of the things I talked about in one of my other videos is maybe it would be a cocoon factory. And look right there at the end of my finger by my thumb is a cocoon. Right here is a cocoon on top of that worm. Got a baby right there on my fingernail and then and over here, I saw a couple other cocoons. So this loofah is definitely creating a little worm factory that they love to come over in. I think they like to rub their cocoons off on the little spaces in between this loofah. Very, very cool. So we'll go ahead and put that to the side. And if you saw me digging around more than I usually do, it's because I was looking for the loofah. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make a big area for our big feeding with lots of different kinds of bedding in it too. 
All right, we've got our hole. Let's go ahead and fill it. Check this out. I've got seven or eight baby worms. I don't always show this, but this is what happens in between when I pull my hands out. I usually come in here and kind of take the worms off so we don't lose them. I do that at the end too. So here's a little bit harder of a cardboard tube. And then here's some of the normal toilet paper ones. And here was a paper towel one we just kind of ripped up right there. And then we'll throw one more in there. And then we'll line it with some more dry bedding. Now I like to put a lot of carbon in because with this bin, I'm constantly harvesting it. So it just needs a lot of volume. And speaking of volume, here's one of the things we're gonna put in. We've got a lot of lettuce and a lettuce stock. This stuff goes super fast. And then a lot of colorful feeding right there. Let's pour it in. So in there, we've got some great watermelon. Again, more fast food. We've got a banana peel, which is slower food. Another banana peel right there. And then we'll go in with some of the stuff my mom gave me from her house. And it looks like, oh, she gave me some cabbage. <laughs> too soon, too soon. I don't know if you saw a few videos ago. We put a whole head of cabbage in here, but this one is a little more broken up and I'm going to kind of break it up more. So the good thing is it's frozen and I tore it into as many pieces as I could. And then one more bag will go in right there. So this looks like, oh, I've been wanting to do this. So this is some homemade French toast that we made. I'm gonna put this down a little bit further because this has some eggs in it. And here is a huge mango that she gave us. So go ahead and put some holes in it. And no worries about putting cabbage in, you can put it in. We just happened to have put a whole head of cabbage in and it kind of stank things up because it was just too much for the bin. So under here, I'm gonna go ahead and put in this French toast right there and we'll put this stuff on here. Now, this is a lot of nitrogen, but it is fast, so I think the worms will be able to get to it quick, but I am going to come in here and check on the heat for sure. Let's kind of put this one right down there. This is all previously frozen, and then I let it thaw out mostly, so you can see it should not harm the worms at all, and I'm going to put a whole bunch more cardboard right there. So in we go with cardboard. We'll put even more in, and that might help to clean off my hands too go. Anybody notice I missed something? I forgot to put the amendments on. So we are just going to kind of spread this out and we'll just add the amendments right into here. So first thing we'll go in with is some warm chow, just expired grains and oats from my pantry that I like to put into here in my worm bins instead of into the garbage. And then we'll go in with some coffee and tea grounds. Again, just another food source for them. And it helps me to do something more productive with my coffee grounds and get the nutrients into the garden by putting them into my worm bins. And then finally, we'll add some pulverized eggshell and it's just some grit for their gizzards. Helps them make their food smaller so they can digest it. And I just blend it up in my magic bullet blender after I rinse them and dry them. All right, so now we can cover it up with all this cardboard. I'm gonna put some more in here. There we go. And after we're done here, we're also going to add some water. I'll do that off camera. Let me go ahead and try and add from the sides into the top here because we are going to do a 522 worm worm release right here on the top. And you can see from me pulling up here, there's just tons of worms already in this bin. I absolutely love it. All right, so let's see. There we go. I think that's probably good enough for a worm release. We've got some room to go in there. So here we go, 522 worms. I think that one little worm finally figured out where it wanted to go. And if you're wondering, here's the black soldier fly larvae. I speed up the worms like maybe 40 times and here it is normal time. And here it is double time. All right, so those are going in the compost. We're gonna add a whole bunch of more shredded cardboard here. Put it on the sides and just everywhere because it is summertime. The population is really expanding. I want to give them a whole bunch of room to expand into. So again, like I said, summer in Florida, I'm going to go ahead and come in here and check on the heat and I'm going to water this in after we're done. So I hope you're having a great day. I hope your worm bins are doing really well. So happy vermicomposting, everybody. Take care now.